our Lord God Almighty cannot be likened to a man. It will be a day that Ezekiel says that they will cast their silver on the street. The gold, the money will be worthless. The precious things that you own will be worthless. And the Bible says that you will cast it on the street because it cannot save you. This lack of godly character. According to the Bible, that God is abandoning the people to forbidden passions to forbidden desires because that is a way of god expressing his wrath and judgment honor the lord jesus you will honor god the father and you will honor the holy spirit because they are three in one the lord that you have tuned in uh, we want to praise the lord for his faithfulness to keep us going every day. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we give you the glory. We honor you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. Lord, as we share your word, we ask that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us and remove any hindrance that would stop us from getting, getting the word and getting your heart. Thank you, Father, for the viewers, the listeners, and thank you even for the vessel that you're using. I'm praying that you will sanctify it and bless in the name of jesus we thank you father in jesus name we are praying amen praise the lord welcome again to this telecast and i want us to uh, read uh, the word of god in proverbs chapter chapter six proverbs chapter six and uh, we're just going to Study the word of God. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12 to 19 says, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. This, these six things doth the Lord hate. Year seven are uh, an abomination unto him. A proud look, one. Two, a lying tongue. Three, hands that shed innocent blood. Four, an heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Five, feet that be swift in running into mischief. Seven, six, a false witness that speaks lies. And seven, he that soweth discord among brethren. Now praise the Lord. I want to thank God for this word. As I was reading the scripture, I discovered that the Lord has been merciful to us to give us the blueprint of what we are supposed to do and how we are supposed to live. And the scripture tells us here, that God lists the things that he doesn't like and certainly the things that describe a wicked person or someone who is rebellious and is describing one word as a forward person. Now, forwardness, according to the dictionary definition of forwardness, it is to be habitually disposed and disobedient in an opinion. To dispose to, ob to disobedient and opposition. That's what uh, forwardness is, according to the Webster, Miriam Webster Dictionary. Now, the Oxford Dictionary defines it as a, f a person who is difficult to deal, th to deal with, someone who is very difficult to deal with, someone who is uh, uh, stubborn, someone who is headstrong, self willed, strong willed, contrary. Or perverse. That's the definition, the dictionary definition of a forward person or forwardness. Now the scripture tells us that this is a this is a the, 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 the description of someone who is rebellious to God, calls him a forward person. Now the Greek word from which the Bible was interpreted call, call, de defines this word as someone who is bent crooked or twisted and usually it applies to moral errors when someone is living in moral errors therefore we can conclude that uh, forwardness also de uh, 
uh, defines morality. It is actually morality. So someone who is morally bankrupt can be described as a forward person. So basically, it is uh, something that is opposed to God. And the Bible says it is an attribute of a wicked person, of a naughty person, of someone who is opposed to God continually. So opposition to God is simply not unbelief or paganism or being involved in witchcraft or all those other things. But even this which the Bible talks about as forwardness and actually it says at some point the seventh is an abomination. The characteristic of this person, the Bible lists, to, uh, lists for us to see. The Bible warns us also against forwardness and emphasizes it to be a quality of a wicked person, so we should not exercise it in any way. Hallelujah. So, as the Bible is describing the characteristics of a forward person, you need to be able to see that these things do not, uh, they don't be part of you. Now, these are a few things which I noted out of the scripture. You see, the scripture is meant for, to guide us. It's supposed to guide our footsteps. Uh, David said that your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light to my path. That he may not walk in darkness, we need to be able to walk in light of the scripture. Now, when the Bible begins to describe such a person and what, uh, what their status is with God, it means we are supposed to avoid them because a forward person is a rebellious person and therefore they are opposed to God. Now, what do they do? These are some of the characteristics, the things that describe a forward person. They wink with their eyes. Now, winking is a sign of keeping a secret, usually an evil secret, something that you don't want others to know. You're not proud of it being revealed. You know, so you, you find yourself winking. Smith Wigglesworth at one point, actually, when someone winked at him, he was so, so, so upset. When you read the biography of that man of God, he actually was very upset and a, a wicked person winketh with his eyes and he would quote the scripture there and then to you. That is how that man of God used to behave. When you read his biography, you will see. So usually they wink with their eyes. Number two, they speak with their feet. They are always everywhere trying to go to places where they, even they don't concern them. These are the people that go on demonstrations even when they are not in they are not even aware of what's happening. When they go for a football match, they just shout because they don't even know who is playing, who is winning, who is losing, who has done what. They just join the crowd. Their feet are usually swift to go to a place, and they teach with their own hands. They are very fast at causing mischief or fighting or beating, and they, and they devise mischief continuously. They saw... Uh, discord among brethren. Now, these are some of the characteristics of a forward person. Hallelujah. Because, the, because this person, a wicked person, exhibits these characteristics, the Bible clearly expresses distaste for such a person, a dislike. Uh, God, 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 God does not associate with such people. He, he expresses dislike uh, on such people. Hallelujah. So, Today we, we want to look at these things that the Lord hates. And they are, des they are describing the characteristic of that person. But I will tell you that uh, oftentimes we find ourselves exercising some of these things even without knowing. We find ourselves doing them even without knowing. But the scripture tells us uh, th some of these things which the Bible, talk the Bible talks about, they have already been... They, they, they are examples of how God dealt with such uh, behaviors. And therefore, the Bible warns us because if we continue to do the same thing, we shall meet the same end as those people who met their end when they were practicing the same thing. So we want to look at what are these characteristics, what are the manifestations of this, what the Bible describes as the characteristics of the forward person. Hallelujah. And if you find yourself exercising or practicing any of them, it is time for you to change. That means the spirit of the Lord is refining you to be a better person. I always find joy 
in being rebuked by the word of God. When the word of God rebukes me, I know that the Lord is talking to me and he wants me to be a better person. So I am grateful that the word of God can speak to me and I pray that the word of God speaks to you also so that you can become a better person, ready to receive your Lord and Savior because the Bible says that he's coming back for a spotless church, a church that is without any sin and you are part of the church, and I am part of the church. The word of God has been left with us here, the Bible, in order to refine us so that we are able to be that spotless church that Christ is coming for. And so this, this is just for us to always keep checking ourselves because we are racing towards eternity, and we want to race towards eternity of eternal life, not eternal death. So if we find ourselves falling on the other side of eternal death, this is what the scripture is telling you. The scripture is rebuking you so you can go on to the other side. Hallelujah. So what does the, Bi the, Bi the Bible tell us about some of these characteristics? You want to start with a, a proud look. Or oh, the Lord hates a proud look or oh, haughty eyes as it is written in the book of Proverbs. The Lord hates it. Hallelujah. This is simply pride. The scripture tells us that uh, this is what defines the devil. The devil has the nature of pride. He has been proud from the beginning. He has been proud, and that is what led to his downfall. His heart was lifted up. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15, the Bible says that, the, the, okay, let me read the scripture. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Hallelujah. You can see what brought down the devil. It was pride. He had exalted himself above every other thing. And when we read that the scripture of, of and when we read the scripture describing the, the devil as, uh, as a created being in Ezekiel 28, you will see that this guy was actually, a, it, he was the definition of perfection. He was perfect in everything. He, his, his creation was exceptional. There is no other thing which was as beautiful as this guy called Lucifer, who has now today become the devil. He was such a beauty, and everything God had made him so perfect, and he was one of the archangels in heaven. But you see, what brought him down was pride. And pride, the Bible says that it comes before a fall. Hallelujah. There are so many negative consequences of pride which should be as uh, valuable lessons to us because uh, uh, the, the message is clear on pride. It is consistent. It is consistent. The, the, damage, the dangers of pride is very consistent in the Bible. So it is only important for us to be able to understand and avoid pride. It is often depicted as the sin or the vice that leads to negative consequences. That is what pride is about. Hallelujah. We may not actually pray it. Sometimes we don't realize how it is creeping in. But when you find yourself beginning to exhibit the nature of the devil, because there are things that describe uh, 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 pride, as we shall see in the scripture. We shall see what made some, th there are certain people who behaved like these, and they were exhibiting pride, and you will see as we go along. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 16, 18, says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Are you listening to what the scripture is saying? Pride itself is, is a self-destructive mechanism. It will destroy you before you know it. That's, what, that's how, how difficult, how, how serious pride is. Hallelujah. So when you see a man proud, you know that his downfall is imminent. He will not last long. 
in the New Testament, Jesus speaks up against pride and he warns his followers on the dangers of pride. Matthew 23 verse 12 says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. This is what the scripture says. And he that shall humble himself, he shall be exalted. Hallelujah. So Jesus himself talked about pride. Actually, he warned against pride. In one statement, he said, if you lift up yourself, you will be brought down. However, if you humble yourself, you are going to be exalted. It is, it is, it is such a joy to be exalted by the Lord, to be lifted up by the Lord. Because when God lifts you up, when God promotes you, no one can bring you down because your foundation is pure. Your foundation is sure. It is a solid rock. No one can pull you down. But most times, oftentimes, when we lift up ourselves, our foundation is sand. We have actually built everything we want to show the people on the foundation of sand. So if any, when anything comes, it shakes your whatever you have built for people to see, and it will certainly fall. And Jesus said that any house that is built on the sand cannot stand the storms of life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so when you look at the life of Jesus Christ, he built his life on humility. And pride is the opposite of humility. Jesus is the opposite of Satan. As, uh, whereas Satan built his, 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 his glory, his kingdom, and everything surrounding him on pride, Jesus builds his on humility. So as the church of Jesus Christ, we need to adopt that with Jesus exhibited for us. He manifested humility for us to see. And so we cannot be on the other side. At the same time, we think we are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we need to humble ourselves. Whoever does exalt himself will be actually brought down. Hallelujah. Now the scripture tells us that Moses was the meekest man on earth. He was the most humble man on earth. This is what the scripture says. But what made him to be humble? A man of high status, of, 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 of high degree. He grew up in the palace, known as the prince of Egypt. He did not get satisfied with that title. He wanted something better. And the scripture says that you know the story of Moses. When you did the book of Exodus from chapter 3, you see that he actually was driven out of Egypt because he was not satisfied uh, by being a prince in the palace when others are living in slavery, you know. He did not look at himself, but he looked at the status of the other people. And the scripture says that he was driven out of Egypt and he went and lived in the exile for 40 years. Imagine, 40 years. But when the, he was in the exile, the Lord encountered him. And God taught him the secret of greatness. And the secret of that greatness was humility. And the Bible says that he, when he was given assignment to come and lead the children of Israel, God had dealt with him. And for 40 years, the Lord was dealing with him to make him such a humble person. And when he became the leader of the Jews, when he was leaving Egypt, he left with a, a testimony. He left powerfully after performing such amazing miracles, great miracles, but even those miracles would not make Moses to be proud. He was not, he was not lifted up in his heart. He was not proud in his heart as many of us would today when you heal, even just healing headache. You become so proud that you see, I am also somebody, I can pray for somebody and they get their healing. But listen, Moses, Moses did amazing miracles. He put the whole country at a standstill. Everybody trembled at the presence of Moses. When Egyptians saw him coming, they would begin to tremble until they gathered courage and told Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, please, for the sake of our nation, take, let this man go away from our country. Otherwise, we shall all be dead people. That is how fearful 
the people of Egypt, the Egyptians were when they, when, whenever they would encounter Moses, you see? But that's how powerful Moses was. But the Bible calls him was such a meek person. He was such a humble person. Hallelujah. He was humble even despite the fact that he was greatly used of the Lord. And the fear of Moses fell upon his enemies and his friends as well. But he did not use that to his advantage. He was humble. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when we humble ourselves, the scripture says that our God will lift us up. And that is what happened to Moses in Peter in First Peter chapter five verse six. The Bible says, "Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time." That is what they did to Moses, and I pray that that is what He does to us. And I pray that every one of us will will get the heart to pursue this humility, because this humility that makes God to be the one to exalt you, you can never be brought down. Hallelujah. You can never be brought down. And you stand firm and you stand strong because you are built on the solid rock of ages because Jesus was actually described as the most humble. And he humbled himself even up to the point of death and death of the cross for that matter. It was just not an ordinary death. You see, the death of the cross at that time was the most humiliating death. It was the death that everybody feared. But Jesus did not even mind about that. He humbled himself for your sake and for my sake, and he was crucified, even if he was guiltless. Jesus was guiltless. He was sinless. He was innocent. An innocent man, the thief on the cross, acknowledged and said, Remember me, O God, when you're in your kingdom. Remember me, O Lord. Because he was innocent. The other thief was cursing him and said, if you are the son of God, why don't you save yourself and save us also? No. He was, he was even humble. He did not reply the thief. But when this man responded in humility, the Lord told him and said, today you are going to be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. A humble heart will be exalted. A humble heart will be promoted. Promotion comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now looking at the life of Moses, in Numbers chapter 16, verse 2 to 3, uh, we'll look at this a little bit in detail and we see. The Bible says, in the book of Numbers 16, verse 2 to 3, it says, And they rose up before Moses with a certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Hallelujah. And they assembled again as Moses and Aaron, saying to them, You take too much upon yourselves, seeing that the whole congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the community of the Lord? Hallelujah. Listen to this. If you read that scripture, when you read that scripture, you will see that God fought for Moses. Despite the fact that a rebellion came up against him, and it was just not a rebellion. It was a rebellion of influential people, the people whom he had considered to be in his leadership. Because the Bible says that they were men of renown. They were men of status in the community. They were not just anybody. They were people that exhibited influence in the community. Hallelujah. But they rose up against Moses. But even when they rose up against Moses, he did not contend. The Lord came to fight for him. And when the Lord came to fight for him, the Lord told him and said, Moses, I have had enough. Um, I've had enough. I'm sick of these people. Just get out of the way. Let me wipe them out. Let me finish them. Humility cried out to the Lord and said, God, you cannot do that. He pleaded on behalf of the people, the very people that wanted to destroy him. Moses pleaded for them and said, God, you cannot destroy them. Please, please don't give them another chance. And the Lord listened to Moses. And the Bible says that when Moses came back from interceding for the people, he told the people and said, whoever is on the side of the Lord, come this side. Whoever is on the side of these rebellious men, go that side. The sons of, 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 Ab, the, the sons of Korah, Abiram, and Dathan, those were the princes. The Bible says they were princes, men of renown. They were leaders of the people. 
But Moses knew that the anger of the Lord would destroy indiscriminately. And so he decided and said, no, not every innocent person should die because of the sins of these people. And the Bible says he pleaded with the Lord. And he separated the innocent people from the rebellious people. And on that day, there was a mass grave. The Lord just opened up the earth, swallowed up the rebellious people, and closed. And the case was settled. Hallelujah. The Lord fought for Moses. But you know the amazing things? When you go ahead, I think from verse 14 upwards, you'll see that the very same people the following day rose up against Moses and they began to accuse Moses and say, Moses, you are a murderer. You murdered the people of God. You caused their death. But was it Moses that caused their death? No. It was themselves, the pride in their hearts, the pride in their hearts caused them to perish. They rose up against the servant of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that is what happens in naughtiness. Now today, we have a lot of people of such characters in church. When you find yourself being, you know, you're talking against people in church, the people... Uh, because of your education, because of your social status, because of your wealth, because of maybe uh, what, you, what, you, what you own, you know, you become unruly or you, you come to church and you want to make sure that everybody is listening to you. And when they don't listen to you, you say that these people do not, do not respect you. No. Listen, let me tell you. A haughty person, a proud, a proud person is always arrogant. A proud person always feels that they are untouchable. A proud person always feels that they, they, their words should always be taken. And if their words are not taken, they say the people do not respect. They begin, they begin to, 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 to bring their accolades at the forefront and say, Don't you know that I am a person of this nature? I'm a person of this status. I'm a person like this, like that, like the other. Hallelujah. So we find ourselves always exhibiting this nature of the sons of Korah, Dathan and Abiram. We who rebelled against Moses. Sometimes we find this. That is what leads to the congregation splitting. Many churches have split on account of pride because we are unable to submit because we feel that we are the ones contributing the most to the church. Therefore, everything we say must be taken. No, you don't hold the church to, uh, to, to at ransom simply because you are the best giver or simply because you give a lot of money in the church. No, God does not sustain the church on account of you. If you go away tomorrow, God will bring someone else who is able to sustain how do you know that God has not raised you up for such a time as this to support the church in which you are today? But you want to begin to put the church at ransom and put everybody at ransom because you are the best giver. Let me tell you, when we do that, we begin to rebel against God. And that is a serious thing. That is a serious thing. When we begin to look at ourselves as the most important, the most beautiful, the most educated, the most wealthy, the most known, the most eloquent, these are the things that set us against God. We begin to exhibit pride, and God hates pride. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. These are the things that God hates. And I hope we find in our hearts that we are not following in the footsteps of Ab Abiram and Dathan and, and, and the sons of Korah. This is a dangerous thing. So may the Lord bless us as we, have, we shall continue on that series and detail some of the things that God hates. Father, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, that you will guide us and help us, my Father, to, to, to be careful and not to be proud because you hate pride. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Mm -hmm.